Okay. Everyone ready? Did you have anything you want to say first, Mr. Manager? First of all, at the budget retreat in February, uh, we kind of uh, talked about, um, a, a, along with all of our other challenges, employee uh, compensation. And we promised you that we would come back with some data. And l let me just say that as an elected body, thank you for asking for that. Because there's a lot of elected bodies that would not want to know what their situation is within the market analysis and would not want to know the facts because these details are uh, they're concerning and it's not going to be a one-year fix. And after uh, today, I'm not even sure it's a five-year fix. It's, it's going to be a generational uh, um, type of repair on this. So I appreciate you letting us present this. And Sheena's done and her staff have done um, some considerable research, some outside entities. And a lot of what we rely on is Wichita State here to give us future data on what the market's going to be doing and what what the jobs are going to be paying. So with that, um, I'll let Sheena go through and then we can have question and answer uh, at the end and go forward with how you see fit. Sounds good. Afternoon, Sheena. Good afternoon. I'm Sheena Schmetz, Chief Human Resources Officer. And I also very quickly want to recognize our compensation compensation staff, Bethany Corral and Amy Murray. They are instrumental in making um, all of this come together and put our information um, together for the presentation, but also for the organization itself. Over the last few days, you have presented a tremendous amount of information and heard a multitude of financial requests. Today, I will be presenting information that will focus on employee compensation. The purpose of today's workshop is to give guidance to human resources, finance, and the county manager for future direction of employee compensation, specifically addressing the deficiencies in our employees' salaries. We do not have a one and done answer to eliminate this issue. However, we do have options and flexibility within those options in future years. I will give a brief overview of our compensation history, essentially a snapshot of how we got to where we are. I will also present percentage options to align with marketable wages. I must emphasize that these are estimated projections. This is our best guess at looking into the future to get a better idea of where we will land with compared to the market value. Please understand that there are many variables and moving parts to this discussion. We must consider what funds will be available, what the salary market is showing, and what is going on in our local and regional economy. As it was mentioned yesterday, compensation is competing for the same pool of money as many other requests. Today, we will provide a framework for your discussion. We need to address a long-term approach to employee compensation that aligns with the Commission's goals. It is my hope that based on your direction, we can create a long-term strategy to improve and continue to address compensation needs in our organization. I also hope that compensation is a regular part of our conversations with the Commission. Here is our roadmap for today. Again, just a brief background, then information about our current pay plan and the recent market analysis. I will show you options for a five-year um, approach to address our misalignment and finally open the floor for your discussion. Earlier this year, the Commission attended the budget retreat at WSU. Jeremy Hill presented this graph predicting a steady uptick in the adjusted wage growth in our region. This is a positive indicator for our local economy, which is good news, but also a strong indicator to us that local wages are on the rise. By his analysis, the growth is around 2.75%. At the same meeting, Mark Goldberg of Gallagher Benefit Services indicated our local wage growth at 2.25%. Both of these sources, by both sources, we know that the local economy and the local wages are increasing. For the purposes of our projections in the workshop today, we will assume a 2.5% average annual wage growth. In 2014, Sedgwick County worked with the company Evergreen to perform a market sal salary survey. 
This information showed that we were 6.7% behind market in salaries. Fast forward to 2018, where the co county contracted with Gallagher Benefit Services to perform a market salary survey, and the information concluded that we, on average, are now 14.3% behind market. Each year, it appears we are losing ground, and what we are doing is not keeping us marketable or competitive. So you might be asking, what have we done to address these results? In 2014, as a result of that Evergreen study I mentioned, the play pay plan was redesigned. Grades were expanded, and the lowest grade, grade 110, was shifted at 3.3%. It's worth mentioning that not all grades move this amount, which is why I don't have it reflected on the screen. It was more or less a trickle down effect from that one grade shift. In 2015 and 16, no changes were addressed. In 2017, the pay plan was shifted 2.5% and another half percent in 2018. And there were no changes in 2019. As you can see, we have recommended a 1.5% shift in 2020. This is one of those moving pieces that I mentioned before. 1.5% is only a conservative suggested target. <coughs> this slide shows the past six years of compensation history. As noted, every year there have been rifts, which are reduction in force, smaller pay pools, and limited GPAs, which are general pay adjustments. In 2018, the county worked with Gallagher Benefit Services to perform that salary survey for 60 benchmark positions within the organization. While this is good information to review, the results showed that we are now on average 14.3% behind market. Market is based on a midpoint for those surveys, surveyed positions. And according to Gallagher, this ranking places us in a category of possible misalignment with the market, but also very close to being considered a significant misalignment. However, wages are not the only area that we have fallen behind. According to the study, we are also behind the market in the following adjustments to our pay plan, personal floating days, paid leave for part-time employees, carryover of paid leave, meaning the total number of hours an employee can carry over from one year to the next, gym memberships. Um, I do want to add on a side note, we do have a meeting with the manager today specifically addressing gym memberships. Um, the ability to work from home or telecommute, flexible schedules, and tuition reimbursement. And this piece was also brought up in the HR budget presentation, and we will be looking into it and we'll report back to the commission on tuition reimbursement. The most notable difference, according to Gallagher, where the county is behind is in the adjustment to the pay plan, which ultimately leads to misalignment in the wage market, including issues of recruitment, promotion, and retention. As you can see from the available data in 2017, Sedgwick County shifted the pay plan 2.5% and the market wage adjustment was 2.4. In 2018, Sedgwick County adjusted 0.5% and the market adjusted 2.2%. And again, in 2019, we made no adjustments, but we are estimating the market to move at 2.5%. However, I do have good news. Gallagher noted that Sedgwick County is leading the market in terms of benefits to employees via the employee contribution for both medical and dental insurances. Um, you might want to keep this in mind as we work through our benefit design workshop on Monday. And I will give you one little hint that employees will not only have great, benef great contribution and benefit options, and they will also have the option of which plan they would like to enroll in and options for a deductible design. I also want to reinforce that when we talk about compensation, we need to remember it is more than just wages. 
While wages are a big and very significant part of the packages for employees, there are other areas we can look to to provide a total compensation. Things such as retirement programs, even retirement incentives. The Gallagher study also indicated that the county does align with the market for employer and employee contributions for a defined retirement plan. Leave benefits. We are currently reviewing options for PTO. However, according to the study in Gallagher, it provided that 87% of those reporting organizations responded that they use traditional leave programs rather than PTO. Therefore, the county does align with the market for annual vacation, sick, and holidays per year. Our work environment is equally as important to employees. We can focus on employee recognition, flexible schedules, enforcing an investment on supervision and leadership, and also many organizational development opportunities as an avenue to engage employees. So where do we go from here? We are working with WSU to create a long-term compensation strategy to address our pay plan and long-term sustainability of those measures. We have learned that having market information is only valuable if you can apply it to the plan. However, we first need to have a solid foundation to apply any changes to wages without causing future inadequacies. WSU will assist us in the first step of a grade analysis. As you can see from the pay plan that I have put in front of you, we have 36 grades. We need to ensure that we have the appropriate minimum and maximum wages at each grade and parameters and definitions to make sure that we have employees <coughs> classified correctly. Later this fall, we will have a reporting tool for job description comparisons. This will hopefully reduce the number of reclassifications because we will be able to use this tool for easy job comparison. In addition, we will establish best practices for hiring, promotions, and reclassifications by updating our policies. And finally, a cost analysis per employee. And what I mean by a cost analysis is that if by this process we identify that an employee is misclassified or in a wrong grade, we will be able to determine how much it will cost to reclass the employee to the correct grade. And finally, in the spring of 2020, we will have completed market data, grade analysis, and selection of implementation plans. This will also be a time where we will address those surveyed positions in the Gallagher survey that were significantly misaligned, as well as slot all of the county positions based on those benchmark uh, surveyed positions. It is our goal to complete a market analysis every five years to keep the compensation on track with the market and not fall as far behind as we currently are. So what are our options? This slide represents four options that are very flexible. Again, these are just options and every one of these options has flexibility and assumptions. The first assumption is the pay pool. These are percentages of the wages that must be available for us to move our pay plan as well as our pay pool. The second assumption is that the market is moving at 2.5% each year. We cannot predict a concrete percentage each year, but we can predict a general idea based on previous wage growth and market adjustments. Option A. This option is what is assumed in our budget forecast. The pay pool is 3.5%. This pay pool may be a pay for performance or a GPA pool that has not been decided yet. Our pay plan movement is 1.25%. So if we know that we are 14.3% behind the market and it is moving forward at 2.5%, if we make no changes at the end of the year, we'll be somewhere around 16.8% behind market. However, we are opting to move that pay plan 1.25%, which will collectively put us approximately 15.55% behind market at the end of 2020. This same theory is placed in the outer years. 
Remember, our goal is to move our pay plan to be in more alignment with the market, so it needs to shift with the market movements. Option B is a 6% pay pool to encompass a 2.5% pay plan movement. This option will keep us neutral at 14.3% behind market in 2020, but also in the outer years to 2024. Option C is more aggressive, but would align us with a 12% behind market in five years. Again, we would need a 7% pay pool. We would move the pay plan 3%. And finally, option D, and you might recall our goal from the budget retreat was to be close to single digits or 10% behind market. In order to do that, we would need an 8% pay pool in 2020, which would decrease in the outer years to 7.5%. The pay plan movement would start at 3.5 and decrease to 3.25 in the outer years to get us somewhere close to 10% behind market. So what are we looking at for 2020? The pay plan would shift Again, 1.25% going from a starting wage, in our example, in 2019 of 14.474 to a starting wage of 14.655 in 2020. The maximum amounts would also shift. This would only apply to new hires effective 1-1 of 20 and those employees that are at the maximum of their current pay grade. The pay pool is at 3.5%. With those funds, we are able to have an employee pay pool or GPA of 2.25%, and then the remaining 1 to 1.25% would be focused on reclassifications based on the grade analysis, and then target adjustments for identified positions based on the salary survey. <clears throat> Again, our goal today is to get direction in the long run of addressing compensation deficiencies in the pay plan. We know that this cannot be corrected in one budget cycle or even in five, but understanding your priorities will help staff better plan for the future. And with that, I would like to open that up for discussion and questions. Let me make sure I've got it clear. Right now, at the start of this pay period by where 14.3 uh, behind where the, the, the market is. That is correct. And if I, I got to make sure I understand that if, if we give a 3.5% pay raise next year, because the market's moving, we're going to be at 15.55 behind. Yes. That's with a 3.5% pay raise. Yes. Well, you didn't bring us any good news at all. I, I, I have hard news. <laughs> it's very hard news. Um, sorry. Um, people, sorry. Um, it is. It's very hard. Um, and like I said at the beginning, there is not a single identifier to solve this problem. It is a long-term strategy that we need to address over time. And again, that's where we need your direction as to what you would like us to do as far as priorities go and a time frame that, that you feel would be acceptable to address this issue. Yeah. Well, we anticipated this based on the retreat we had earlier this year. And we kind of had an idea that this is what you were going to brief us, but just now reality is really here on black and white. So, uh, yeah, just, to just to clarify, Chairman, when we say 3.5%, we're talking about a pay pool. There's a lot of things you try to do with that amount of money. Uh, some of it is to give raises to employees. Some of it is to move the the, the 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 entire classifications over from left to right. So you increase minimum, increase maximum, and, and everything in between. So you do a number of things with that 3.5% pay pool. It's, it doesn't necessarily all equate into a wage increase That's for an employee that 3.5%. <coughs> Uh, Commissioner Cruz has a question. How does this, um, so with piggybacking off of what you just said, um, help me understand 
how this translates to dollars. So if we do raise those, when does it? When would it start? So I guess this sheet tells you what it will go to, I guess? January 1 of 2020. Okay. So, and I am new at this, so please forgive me for asking all these questions, but if we give 3.5% as a raise, let's say, what will that equate to in dollars? Like, was that everybody across the board gets a 3.5% raise? Um, I'm, I'm going to defer okay. back to this slide. If we have a 3.5% pay pool, what we are looking at is a 2.25% employee pay pool or GPA that could be either pay for performance or a GPA that has not been determined yet. So um, to say that that's going across the board yet is premature. So if an individual employee would receive a 2.25% bump. And, it, and how much that is depends on what their salary is. So you know, if you're making, I mean, on the example given on this, if you're making 14.47, a 2.25 would be how much? 14.79. Your pay would increase to 14.79. I guess when we're looking at money in the budget, allocating this to that, <coughs> how does this relate to all of the other asks you know when we're thinking about all of the services that are mm -hmm. being asked of us in this decision package mm -hmm. you, you see what i'm trying to say yeah. here and, and just to, just to put a number on it and lindsay help yeah. me out each each percentage okay. of raise each percentage of compensation pool for an employee is well out. well hmm. wait there, so when we're talking about the financial forecast, which is what you've been seeing, all we're looking at is county property tax supported funds in that instance. Mm -hmm. And so that means that's not everything. If you remember, Rick got up here this morning and talked through all the different types of funds mm -hmm. we have. So only about 70% of our spending happens in those tax funds. So I'm going to give you a number because it relates to the forecast, but no, it's not complete. So for every 1% of pay pool, when we throw in salaries and wages, overtime, payroll taxes, all the stuff we have to pay for every dollar in earnings, it's worth about one point, just less than $1.2 million in the tax funds, every 1%. But that forecast you saw, that big long sheet, had a 3.5% pool already included in the forecast for 2020, and then it bumped up to 4% in those outer years. And so when you talk, but when you try and correlate that back to money, we're talking probably around $4 million just related to that forecast portion, probably about $6 million overall for the whole county. Okay. No, you're good. <clears throat> Other questions? <clears throat> well, right now, the budget as we've been presented up to this point shows uh, 1.3 million uh, deficit mm -hmm. and that is uh, with the three and a half percent yes uh, pay pool Correct. so anything we add if we want to get closer to the 10 percent level uh, every percent we add it adds us a, another over a million dollars correct The GF, yes. And so that one point two million we talked about was all of those taxes. <coughs> so you're probably looking at closer to an eight hundred thousand dollar impact alone for the general fund. GF. Sorry to keep throwing so many numbers at you. Okay. But probably eight hundred thousand dollars of that for one percent. And we still haven't talked about <coughs> uh, other benefits um, on health insurance and all these other benefits, correct? We're, we're still got another workshop to we, talk about that. Yes, we have a workshop on Monday to talk about that. I will say with um, our, our insurance, one thing that we kept in mind when we were going through these plans and looking through the benefit design was keeping that at 5% um, in line with what your forecast indicates. Okay. So if you keep with that, our forecast that we've seen, uh, that's pretty accurate. We may not have to add to a deficit. All right. Commissioner Howe. Yep. So the uh, the pay chart you gave us, this is currently what we're at right now? That's correct. What's the, what's the term 2080 mean? 
2080 is the annual amount of hours that the employee works, okay. 2080. Right, okay, yeah. that's true. So, yeah, okay. Um, and I assume that the uh, the two columns for each of the grades is uh, is hourly rate versus a uh, annualized rate at 2080 hours. That's what that means. Can you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry. I was I say the, in front of you. Each one of these columns has has an hourly rate and an annual rate. I assume the annual is 2080 times the hourly that's, rate. That's correct. Um, back before 2014, there were a number of years where there was no raises or very low raises before 2014. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it starts out 2014 is only 6.7 percent behind. When's, well, the, when's the last time the county was? was on market I think between talking with my staff the most notable time that we've had an analysis done was in 2014 and that was really our benchmark of where we knew where we were at with the market but you're correct we did look at some data and there was um, I believe two years in there um, I can't remember which ones they were where there was there was no raises in there and even some of the raises they had like say tw between 2009 and 20, 20 through 2014 those five years I think some of those raises some some years were zero. Some years was 0 0.5. Yeah. So there was a number of years there where it was it was very very low, and along that we were also doing some significant layoffs and reductions in force at that same time. Yes, right? that is correct. So I guess looking at the starting point, it being 6.7 percent behind, it's kind of surprising actually that it's, it was only 6.7 percent when we're so far behind right now. Mm -hmm. It's just a little surprising to me. Mm -hmm. um, there's two ways, of course, employees can make more money. One way is we're shifting the entire pay scheme up by, so again, the recommendation, if I understand correctly, is you're suggesting out of the 3.5% pay pool, we would shift all grades up 1.25%. That changes all the numbers up 1.25%. Yes. And then, then, then the pay pool is 2.25%. Mm -hmm. Some of them we get more and less, depends on the performance appraisal. Depends on if it's determined to go pay for performance or a GPA, which has yet to be determined. Okay. Um, do we have any, uh, I appreciate the study that was done, but I'm curious, do we have any data to talk about how, are we, are we having trouble recruiting people or have, getting interest in our, in our jobs because of our pay? We have that dated. I mean, we we advertise a job. What's the response rate? We have, the wages are kind of known. What's our response rate? Do we have? I I, I don't know what the response rate is. <laughs> I can look into that. Might be good to note that. In other words, if you say we, we have a job for you and it's you know five dollars an hour, I, mean, I don't think anybody would apply. Obviously, the, the higher the wages are, the more people would 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 apply for that. So I guess I'm just curious if we're getting reasonable response and interest in our jobs at the, at the rates that we do pay currently. I mean, I don't know that we're ever going to get the market. I think that may be a goal that may, it seems like it's a, it's a rabbit that moves ahead of us. It's, we continue to try to catch it, but it's always getting ahead of us again. So I'm just curious, you know, looking at this differently, it, one, of our goal, one of our goals ought to be, are we getting the skills that we need and the employees we need to fill these jobs? And if the answer is yes, and that changes the discussion a little bit. I'm not saying we shouldn't reward our employees. We should, absolutely. We'd like to be at market if possible. But really, the, the key driver here is are we, getting, you know, are we getting interest from the community and getting the skills we need to, uh, you know, from people interested in the jobs at, at what we do pay? And I don't know the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I think we need analysis on that. I agree. <clears throat> I, just anecdotally, I know we have pockets in the organization where we are just are not getting applicants. And I think that's true. I think the jail deputies is a good example. I think that 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 thing that problem's gone on long enough. I wish we could solve it. But and there may be other things like that. It's just the job is so difficult that the wages just even if even starting wage sixteen dollars an hour, eighteen year old graduate from high school getting sixteen roughly sixteen dollars an hour to start a job with benefits, it's not enough because when it, we we have seventy openings, mm -hmm. and it seems like we never solve that problem. And the and the overtime there. Which, by the way, exasperates the issue because people who want to plan a day off can't plan the day off because they have mandatory overtime. So now they're unhappy and they don't want to stay there any longer because they're called in and they, they have to show up, which means they can't plan their days off. And then we're paying overtime. So we're actually, the problem is much more complex than just pay. It's a lot of other things are tied into this. 
And uh, if the pay was to go up to say $3 an hour, you could actually potentially uh, reduce overtime and reduce attrition, and reduce re uh, recruitment, reduce training, and potentially they could actually be you know have a more flush department with higher skills by paying them an appropriate wage. So that's the kind of thing we ought to be looking at: is where in the where in the organization those types of uh, macro adjustments need to be made. That's one I think we really need to focus on. Anyway, thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Sheena. So a couple of questions about this Gallagher study. Did it look at what the difference what the differences were between, say, management pay and just your average rank and file worker type pay? Like where where are we in the market with manage with management compensation? There were sixty positions that were identified and, and I might defer to Bethany on how they were identified. That was previous to um, my coming on board. Um, but I believe those were um, either high turnover or um, hard to fill positions that were identified first in that study. So Sheena is correct. We did um, identify 60 positions. We met with the um, executive team to help identify those positions. <coughs> they are a lot of high turnover and difficult to fill, but we also selected a variety of positions across the organization to hit all, main, all levels. The aggregate results were from all of those positions. They're not necessarily separated out by level. Sure. Um, we could probably do that if you'd like that information. Well, and, and, that, and that's a lot of work. And so I'm not going to ask for that much detail. But what I want to know is where clearly we're, we're not behind double digits <coughs> everywhere. We might be behind single digits some and in some areas 20% yes. maybe. Yes. I mean, I'd like to know where are the positions that we're really struggling in. Mm -hmm. And can we not target that and say, hey, we can't recruit here, we're going to up the pay. And not that the other departments aren't as important, but if when you have a job opening on your website and a specific skill, we can't get anybody to apply because the pay's not good. That's mm -hmm. what I want to know. Mm -hmm. And then the jobs that we have 20 people apply for and 20 people are qualified for, that's maybe not where we need to be focusing um, as much attention to. So I don't think just a three and a half percent increase fixes all of our problems. Um, I mean, it moves everybody closer because we're probably not where we need to be anywhere in any of our positions according to the study. But I just think if, if we were more strategic in it, and, and I hate to micromanage that, and that's not our job as the commission, but I would like to know where are we really struggling and where are we, you know, not mm -hmm. too far behind. Mm -hmm if that makes sense. And that would be part of our approach. Um, again, as we work with WSU to get that grade analysis done to ensure that we have all the positions on the right grade, we would go back and specifically target those Departments. positions that were highlighted that were significantly behind market uh -huh. and maybe some of the hard to fill or high turnover yeah. ones. That would be part of the strategic yeah. plan with the 1% um, because yeah, I know last year when we got involved with the step program for the sheriff to try to uh, make his compensation uh, more competitive when it comes directly to WPD or uh, KHP, for example, we we knew we needed to target that, maybe put more money in that. That That's kind of what I want to know. I'd be open to doing a, a, a broad blanket increase everywhere, but maybe not 3% if we need to take some of that money and really put it into one department where we're struggling. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner, slide 15 will adjust some of that. There is a percentage for reclass target adjustment. I think that's kind of getting to what you're talking about. Yeah. Strategic, surgical. Right here on the back. Let's look at the positions and, and make some modifications. Yeah, and, and I hate to micromanage it, and, and that, that's more your area, but before I just say, yeah, let's go ahead with 3.5%, I'd really like to know what's that go going to do. Mm -hmm. And you are correct. Um, with the results of our market analysis, we showed that there were some positions in the high 30% behind market, as well as those that are over. over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So coming in on average at 14.3, um, while it's not good, mm -hmm. there are that many positions out there that are not great. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Cruz. Thank you, Chairman. That, that's a really good point, Michael. I, I think um, really good idea. I'd like to see that too. On top of that, though, I wonder, and I had asked this before, and this necessarily isn't com compensation based, but 
you know, we have these positions out there that have all these requirements. And at what point um, are people just not applying because, say, they, they don't have a bachelor's degree, but they have an associate's degree with 10 years of um, they have they have a history of doing this work for what is the word I'm looking for? They have experience. They have ten years experience doing this. Um, have we considered something like that? And additionally, um, you know, I had a friend who was, and this is a sheriff's question, but you know, he he wasn't able to get on because um, he had smoked marijuana way back in the day, and so you know, you have to. If, I, that was one of the reasons why he wasn't able to be a, an officer because he had did that way back in his youth, right? Um, and so I wonder how stringent some of these requirements are for the people that we're trying to hire and if th that could be evaluated um, to see if we could get more people to apply. I mean, didn't WPD just lower the requirement for tattoos or something? You know what I mean? It's, it's things like that that I wonder if we could reevaluate our standards. Uh, I'm not saying lower them, but maybe evaluate some different creative ways that we could get more people to apply for these positions that probably are qualified, but maybe don't fit on paper exactly mm -hmm. what we're after that turns them away from even applying in the first place. Um, as we are working with WSU on our grade analysis, part of that is to review our 1500 job descriptions and those requirements for each of those jobs and make sure that the, the minimum requirements that we are asking for that are applicable to the job itself. So we will be reviewing all of those. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we're competing against right now is that uh, unemployment rate is extremely low. Uh, in addition, uh, manufacturing is going up in this community. We just had Spirit announce 2,400 jobs last year. Uh, we had Textron announce 1,000 jobs recently. And those are the folks who we're competing against for all these different jobs. Uh, so uh, I don't know where our range is in grade that uh, I would think that a lot of those entry-level positions at Spirit and Textron and, and possibly going into uh, our uh, detention deputies and so forth are at the lower end of our grade scale. Uh, so I don't know what the solution is. You're going to have to advise me, but uh, I don't know if we need to, to target, uh, I think Commissioner O'Donnell was getting to this, target certain grades uh, to make sure that uh, we're able to, to fill those grades based on the pay pool. I said on uh, groups right now that are studying this very issue across the entire city because everybody is having the same problem trying to find uh, workers uh, to fill the jobs. Uh, we're exporting more people out of the state of Kansas uh, uh, that we're educating here than, than we're importing. So we've got a, a, a brain drain here in the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. um, I know the chamber, we have uh, two different groups that are working at the chamber trying to figure out uh, uh, how to help this. Uh, there are subgroups looking at uh, advanced manufacturing and so I, I don't know, I, I don't know how we can target our pay pool uh, so that uh, we can make sure that we attract uh, the people to fill the jobs that we absolutely have to fill. Commissioner Meitzner. Thank you. Um, Lindsay, can you just reconfirm? So you're the big sheep that we started from. You've got a three and a half percent total increase in the pay pool. Split up, however it would go. Yes, sir. And so that's before all these. <clears throat> and that, you, you said that, and then we saw all these presentations where they may have wanted to increase four FTEs or five, or those would be in addition to this. Correct. Any of those, for the most part, the decision packages that you've heard over the last week and a half are not included in your financial forecast because those are decision points for the commissioners in terms of policy making where additional resources go in competition with that, to Sheena's point earlier, is compensation for existing employees. And most of those decision packages were not capital improvements, were they? They would be right. That would have that would have been captured in that capital improvement program. 
presentation. The, well, they would have not been a part that. of the departmental request. They would have been a part of that okay. special okay. presentation that okay. I did yesterday. Yes, okay. So the decision packages we were seeing from the departments were mainly operating right. expenses? <laughs> yes. <coughs> I, would, I would dare to say exclusively operating expenses. Yeah, that's why. Either one time or operating. recurring. Some one time, some reoccurring. Right. Okay. Can I ask what what your comfort zone is? Is it three and a half? My comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, I Not think you personally. I mean, you <laughs> professionally. Uh, I think um, it's a hard question to be put on the spot with that right now because we haven't heard yet what your priorities are but obviously this is a real issue we hear consistently from departments that recruitment and retention is an issue mm -hmm. and so I think it has become clear to me over the last couple of budget cycles that this is an area we do need to do something with um, I, I think it gets us down the road but I don't think it does a lot for us so certainly I think it's a good starting point if we could do more that would be great but we have to balance that with all of the other requests that you all are entertaining as well is that adequately duck your question yeah okay I'm, I'm going back in time to where neglect of the city streets for 10 years ended up saying we had to put a lot of money into city street repair and maintenance so and I think this just begins the discussion too to your point we don't want to get further behind if we mm -hmm. don't do this we probably fall further behind um, and and I think um, depending on what your flexibility is with potential deficit spending using fund balance again not always a bad thing depending on the circumstances uh, I think the Commission's um, appetite to talk about those decision packages to talk about capital improvement plans and all of those things is gonna this is just a big part of that puzzle okay thank you for answering and the non-answer sure your... <laughs> my pleasure you should be in politics <laughs> Cruz. Thank you. So coming from the uh, the private sector to here, I mean, I would go, I mean, there would be a, a time when I would get a raise and there would be a time where I wouldn't get a raise. I mean, it just kind of depended on what the management wanted to do at the time. So now that I'm in the public sector, is this something that employees, you know, on a regular basis are going to, so say if I've worked at the county each year, I'm going to get an evaluation and I'm going to, I'm going to expect a raise if I get a good evaluation. Is that how things work around here? You just described some years as Commissioner Howe, I think, brought up, or Commissioner O'Donnell wanted to. If you and we put this back to the 2014 time period because that's when the last, that's when the Evergreen study was done. But if you go back a generation before that, there were years where there was zero, and there was years when you got some raise. It's been going on for multiple generations now, so I think that it, it's very similar to what your experience was in the private sector. That's how it's been here too. Okay, so. <clears throat> Um, and then just to add to you know the notable differences on page eight or the slide eight um, for all of the different things that we might offer you know a gym memberships those kinds of things I was speaking with somebody I, I don't know if it was Linda Kazire or, or somebody who was talking about um, days where our employees could volunteer um, so like in, you know I guess that could be classified as a personal floating day but if we could add or even a mental health day or something if we're going to start you know trying to promote good mental health within our organization I know that that isn't compensation it's not money but maybe those are other things that we could consider yes we we actually have been talking about those okay. things and, and there's two sides to that coin and and I believe that our employees should get to do volunteer work, but at the same time, we are paid for by the taxpayer. So when you look at work environment on slide 11, flexible work schedules, that's to give the employee the ability to do those kinds of things, get, still get their job done. And that just requires a little bit tighter and better management um, by, by supervisors, which leads to the supervisory training component of this. It all ties together. So we, we talk about those a lot as a way to make it a better place to work that doesn't necessarily cost that much. Um, and we are moving forward with that type of management uh, as, as we go forward. Well, I know that there's been discussion in the past. I think Commissioner Howell has brought up, you know, where millennials move jobs every five years. They're, they're called uh, 
gig jobs is what they described it on NPR yesterday morning if anybody was listening to that and this and I would I, I, I couldn't find it on my phone just now when I was looking for it but I will find it and send it to you but they were talking about <clears throat> the study that they conducted Millennials do want to stay at the same place it's just the places aren't changing for Millennials and so that's why they keep moving from gig to gig um, so I see that we are trying to do that so um, I commend us for trying to at least work with the new generation of people to keep them but according to the study I heard yesterday um, Millennials do want to stay at the same places they just have to be worked with in order to do so so yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Meitzner yeah um, referring to the slide you, you remind me I was going to mention earlier and haven't Lacey but so <clears throat> There, there is real value in, uh, I'm going to say, a, a government career related to retirement, defined benefits, whatever it is. I know I think police and sheriff and fire might be different from the regular employees, depending on the departments. But it, it, it's now that I've been exposed to it the few years, it's a, it's an incredibly <laughs> valuable uh, tool. And maybe when you're 25 or 30, you don't really understand the impact of putting 20 years in. And I don't. I know it's kind of a little bit of an elephant in the room. I don't. I don't see that referenced in any of our advertisement. There's a, There used to be a lot of industries that had that. You work, put your 20 years in, and age, and your. And those industries aren't around anymore. I think even Spirit and Textron are going to. 401ks or bonus pool matches at the end of the year, depending on profits and blah blah blah. So, I mean, there's only a few industries left, and I always, I giggle more now when, uh, when the state legislature get together and the first thing they try to do the first two weeks in there is make sure the capers is funded. So, they go in to make sure that they're that they're covered, meaning all of us too that are involved in capers. But that's always a high priority to get done, and then they move into business like school funding and other things. But so it's an elephant that's there, and I. S somehow we could think of a creative way to put that in our recruitment tool is let them know I'm I'm not sure new hirees even understand how valuable that is maybe in the interview or the hiring process orientation it's a sign here and you get this and that but it's it's a fairly nice fairly nice tool there, there has been some evolution in capers too and do you want to talk about that Sheena the one two and three programs and there are three tiers in capers um tier one and tier two are completely different than tier three tier one and tier two are a defined benefit plan whereas tier three is more of a, a cash contribution plan which is not as near um, appealing if you will um, to an employee but i would also opt to say that many new hires that come on board are not even sure of what retirement options we I, have. Would have, I would agree yeah. That's probably a yeah. difficult education process <laughs> to new hires. Yeah. They may think they just want to experience and then they're out of here in five years, whatever. Well, if they stay five, they get vested. True. <laughs> True. So anyway, it's just a, a, a note. And as I look around, I'm trying to think, is anybody in here not on the least plans? I, I know the older I get, the more important it is. You can, yeah, it, be, you, it does become yeah. concerning. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of this meeting, let me make sure I understand what your goal is. It's for us to say, do we agree with your 3.5% so that we can continue on with the rest of the budget? That, that, recommendation. That's what you want to hear from us at the end of this meeting. I, would, I know we've been talking a lot of philosophy. But it's not like <laughs> that. Is this an official But meeting? the bottom line is that we're going to have to make a decision before the, we walk out of here if you're going to continue on with the budget, correct? Well, yes. That. I think the staff recommendation, the budget recommendation, is going to be to ask to retain the 3.5 because um, just historically we get into budget discussions and we see all the need, and then the first place you go is to, uh, let's get a percent off compensation and shore up some of these other needs. And I think we want to try to resist that this year. So I think the recommendation is going to be a couple of things, well, many things, but two main things. Let's keep it at 3.5 for 2020 allow this analysis that Sheena and her staff are, are doing, and this is a, 
a chunk of it is out of the way, but there's more work to be done. Some things like you have mentioned already, strategically, let's look at how we can shore up some of the positions in this organization that we historically just cannot seem to get filled and surgically go in and look at some suggestions we can do for future budget years to, to compensate people. Um, but I think that's the, 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 the first thing we'd ask for is just to allow the 3.5 to remain for next year. Mm -hmm. And actually, as we look out, we have 4% built in for the outer years. As we go through the remainder of our budget discussions this year, and, and we'll be doing one-on-ones with you, and, and then there'll be a manager's budget presented, let's keep one eyeball on those outer years and think of strategies that we can do to maybe um, close this gap slightly. And I, as I said initially, I think it's past a five-year plan. I think we have to look at this generationally and try to attack this. So. Part of the purpose, and I, again, I appreciate you even allowing us to have this kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will tell you that I think that across the country, employers are trying to figure out how to get employees to stay and to, and to attract the workforce. And in government, I think it's even worse because in government across the board, uh, it, cutting out maybe Johnson County in the state of Kansas, it's tough. It's tough to come up with a compensation pool that attracts people away from aircraft or attracts people away from manufacturing. Um, so, it, it's a challenge. I, 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 I'm glad that we are looking at it. I'm glad that we're we're talking about it in public, um, and I think we continue to to move on and um, to try to come up with a good strategy. And we will talk about this every budget year um, on what we do with employee compensation in relation to all of the other needs. I, I have employees emailing me all the time because we have been very transparent with this. Um, and it's about 50-50. Some employees say whatever you can do for compensation would help, but some say forget compensation, get us some help, get us some positions, get us some staffing. So it's very interesting. You can't even get agreement necessarily in the organization. So I think the best, the best solution is we try to, we will do what we do every year, budget year. We will try to prioritize and present to you a budget which addresses to some degree both. So. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Howell. Thank you. I am curious if we've ever uh, done it. As we're doing our study, it'd be, it might be nice to find out from our, from our employees if they would rather have uh, dollars in their salary or, or benefits. Because I think I think these compete. In terms of us, it doesn't really much matter to me. Unless it's like a day off and it doesn't really come down to dollars to us necessarily. That might be almost like an in-kind an in -kind benefit because it's not a dollars and cents type of thing. But... In terms of some of these benefits, like a gym membership, for example, or a, um, yeah, you know, tuition reimbursement, for example, or other things, there may be these may be actual cash co costs to the county. I'd like to know from the employee's perspective: Would they rather see uh, money in salary or money invested in benefits? Um, I don't know. If we have a good answer to that question. Maybe you already know. I don't know. Okay. To my knowledge, there <clears throat> were some employee surveys that went around um, prior. Um, to me joining the county and I, I don't know if that was specifically addressed but employees did talk about um, things that they would like to see um, and I would say the majority of the answers that I have reviewed um, do lean more towards salary so one of the things you said in here which I thought was really interesting is on slide 10 you said we're leading the market on benefits mm -hmm. so again I love that we can do that but I'm, I'm not so sure that leading is where I want to be if I can Put some of that same money that's right now being enjoyed in benefits and turn that back into salary maybe that's a choice we need to make it's just something we again i don't know i don't know how to dissect that question mm -hmm. but the, to me that ought to be a question we're really talking about here and second of all in terms of the the previous comment about retirement um again i was just going to remind a comment 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 i've already made several times here but capers three is not a is not attracting employees um, in fact, there's no benefit to the state to have Capers 3. In fact, if we could encourage them to give us some liberty here and pull that that entire program back to the county, there's no benefit to the state to have Capers 3. It, it would actually help us if we could do, design something slightly different. And I'd like to just remind us, we're putting in, we're putting in 8% and employee puts in 6, but we're, we're stuck there. 6 and 8, and it's not a Roth option. It's, it's, it's controlled by somebody else. Um, you can't pick which risk level you want. It requires five years worth of vesting, and I just think we could develop something that's a little more interesting if we had access to the plan development. We could do something much better for the employees 
to me, this is not the Capers three is is not the right answer for local government, and there's no reason why the state would not allow us to do that. Other than that, I don't think they've thought of it. And when challenged, and I even talked to Kelly Arnold, um, who's chairman of the Capers committee, uh, when you, when you challenge the the idea that this isn't helping the state, they're like, they realize you're right. That that's true. But the unfunded liability is a is a legislature pro legislature problem. It will have to be funded through. Uh, through uh, um, capers two and capers one employees and or tax uh, collections by the state there is no other option for that unfunded liability the capers three is completely separate and so in terms of trying to attract employees once again if we had control of the money I'd like to know whether they'd rather have some of that money in salary or benefits and those benefits could be a lot of different things but I'm willing to challenge us on our personal time and uh, our sick leave and vacation policies, our, our, our health insurance, all that should be on the table trying to figure out what's the best package of benefits and salary. We might be able to see significant changes in salary if we simply were to, to you know, look at benefits as a, as a dollar value. Um, 457 can be a Roth. We could, we could do 14%. We could even kick it up a little bit, maybe incentivize. By the way, you mentioned Spirit. I think Spirit and Textron and other companies, they're only offering the 401k type plans. And some of the companies, I just talked to someone at Coke last week. They actually have bonuses that kick in like 5% after so many years of employment. So there's other things we can do, I think, to incentivize longevity. I think the best thing employees have with, with government jobs, someone mentioned this, I think, but... The benefits really are pretty good, but stability in the job market is a, is a is a really good thing for lots of people. They like the fact they know their job's going to be their job's going to be there, and so that that to me is one of the attractive things we have the private sector doesn't have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you. Well, if you're looking for direction, um, which I think is the whole goal, right? I see Lindsay, <laughs> yeah, enthusiastically shaking her head. I personally do not like the idea of doing a three and a half uh, percent just blanket um, increase without knowing what are the areas that we're struggling in and it where that money can be best utilized but that that's just my that's just my opinion and when when do you think it might those questions that I have you might have answers for for the different areas I know that Tom indicated we were going to continue to study this mm -hmm. so what what's that time frame look like well again the pay pool would be a three and a half percent um for 2020 what we are we are just throwing out for suggestion would be a gpa of 2.25 percent so that would be mm -hmm. your across the board the outer years right. you know yet to be determined if that's a uh, pay for performance or a gpa mm -hmm. as we are working with wsu again to look at that great analysis to get our foundation right I would anticipate that's going to be late summer, early fall, where we will start to have a lot more concrete information as to where um, any reclasses or targeted adjustments would take place. And that's where we've set aside 1 to 1.25 percent for 2020 with that. So um, as we meet those milestones in our study, we can come back to the commission and update you and let you know where we're at with that. Yeah. And are we using WSU just because of our agreement with them, with the mill levy that they provide us research and assistance on projects like this? Uh, not solely because of that. We reached out to them for their expertise. Do they do this for other governments or just us? Um, I don't know about other governments, but when we reached out, they were able to pull a team together to address our needs. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I. I appreciate everything they always do, but but uh, every time uh, I hear from like Jeremy Hill, I, I could I could give his presentation, and and you know it always leaves you wanting to go do bodily harm to yourself. You know it's very depressing. So anyway, Pete knows what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, so I just don't know if they're the right people or not mm -hmm. to to handle this, but but I don't question why you use them. I'm sure they did say they could do it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, this is a tough deal. It is. So, it thanks, is. Sheena. Yeah. Thank you. Well, <coughs> I, I heard what Commissioner O'Donnell said uh, about trying to target 
my worry is picking winners and losers uh, when you're starting to target uh, then uh, those that are losers are going to be disenchanted with the work and uh, we're going to be losing them uh, so uh, I don't know all I can go with my background uh, through my entire military history from all the time I taught I, we had a pay scale and we moved up that pay scale and there weren't winners and losers that way I know a lot of people always said oh we got to have pay for performance out here uh, and you're picking winners and losers when you're doing pay for performance because uh, Pete's sitting right beside me doing the same job I'm doing uh, but uh, the manager says Pete you need a pay raise and David doesn't need a pay raise now I'm not happy uh, so Pete's real happy <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to caution us on trying to do that. Uh, well, I'm not advocating going back to that. I never thought that was a good idea. Okay. Good. And again, right. I might. I, mean, you're, I, you're, I, I, don't, I don't like winners and losers. Right. You're talking performance pay. Right. Yeah. No, that's not what I'm advocating. I'm advocating for what department that we're really. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, emphasizing. And we did for, do that last year for the sheriff's department. Yeah. They, they got. They got. A, they, they got treated differently than the rest of the staff did last year with the step program it is different yes yes yeah. and because we were struggling and and we knew a way we could address that and I think the sheriff stood in front of us last week and said that it, it has helped both with morale and retention and and he seemed pretty positive about it that's kind of what I want to look for these other departments where we're struggling it's what what can we do and not picking winners and losers but addressing mm -hmm. a a dire situation mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think we made we made progress on that key part of public safety which we say is our priority mm -hmm. so I'd just like to know what departments we're, we're struggling the most in and see if we can't do something similar and I get like you're saying Commissioner Dennis that we don't want to say we're just going to give it to these people but if there is an entire department that's struggling mm -hmm we are going to have to say life isn't fair and we can't treat everybody exactly the same because we just did it last year and, and you were enthusiastically supportive of that i was um because public safety is our priority according to our mission statement yeah and we have no bonuses next year in this plan that's yeah. correct because again I, that's picking winners and losers yes. and i did not like the bonus plan but and again for 2020 we will we are looking at a gpa for uh, 2.25 percent the outer years we we don't have anything to find to, to Commissioner Donald's point though I think if we keep the 3.5 pool intact and then strategically figure out how we're going to disseminate that money I think that gets to where mm -hmm. you want to get to mm -hmm. some degree to make sure that we don't yeah. just yeah mm -hmm. okay. if we can uh, if we can afford that and I don't think we'll really know if we can afford that until we actually go through all the budget requests and right. and see where the majority of the commission That's is going to land on those funding requests and then we'll know where where we are that is correct okay well, and just one other thing before we wrap up the, there's there's two things that i want to commend this commission for doing that is free uh the and i think you've seen this specifically now that we've gone through budget the the value of what these people do in this organization for people um, is off the charts and you value that and I hear it from all of you and and don't underestimate what you do for like you did for the sheriff's department today or for public works employees when you commend them from the bench that means a lot to employees um, and, and it doesn't cost anything and also our reputation of professionalism and how we react organizationally we work our leadership team works every day to be professional doesn't cost anything a little bit of work a little bit of management and those those types of environmental things that we do matter a lot to our employees this what we're getting into the weeds of today is tangible dollars and benefits and flexibility of schedule it's important it's important for employees but our reputation our professionalism and how you treat them as elected is very important and I and I just commend the Commission for for doing that so. okay I don't see any other questions from the commission. Uh, do you have anything else that you need from us? Because I don't want to adjourn, and then you all say, "Whoops, they didn't make a decision." No, we're good. This is—it was a good discussion today. I'm glad that we had it in public. 
Uh, we will continue to work on this. Uh, we will, con and it's, it's this isn't a one-year discussion, folks. Uh, it, it's going to be every year. We'll discuss this, and we'll be talking to our employees too. We're talking to our 2,800 members to see what they feel. So appreciate the time today, and and the, the work that Sheena and her staff has done gets us closer to uh, to trying to figure out how to how to resolve the issue. So very good. Anything else from the commission for <clears throat> I don't say anything. Anything from the staff? Did you all didn't get to say anything back in the back, any place? You're all happy? <laughs> all right. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Lindsay, Lindsay's happy. <laughs>